What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of What We Know here on Tabletop Life. We are digging into Eldar once again, and today we've got some support platforms, and we've also got a night spinner, but I'm calling it a platform because it's a hover tank, because why not? But before we jump into it, make sure if you are not subscribed, you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bells, and let us know in the comments what you think about these rules and what you're most excited for, because I love this. And the reason that I love this is because of these bad boy support platforms right here. So earlier in ninth edition, probably for the first year almost, um, before Drukari came out and before I kind of spun up playing Drukari a lot, I played a Harlequins and nine support platform list because of the while we stand, we fight, the indirect fire. I love that list so much, but then I just couldn't, couldn't keep up with Drukari, so I had to stop playing it. Um, and Admech. It was Admech and Drukari just kind of destroyed that list once it once uh, they got, you know, kind of OP. So I'm very excited to bring back my nine platform list with Harlequins mixed in there. Obviously, it seems like there's going to be so many different lists we could play with Craft World, so I'm so excited. Um, so let's kind of go into the goods and the bads of what we know so far about these platforms. So they don't have battle focus, which isn't that big of a deal because two of the three guns are indirect fire. But it would be cool if they had battle focus because then like your vibro cannons with their cool rules could like touch terrain and then peace out. Um, they don't have core. So like you can't just do what you did in the past and like sit in autark, buy these things and get rerolls and stuff like that. So they're not going to have rerolls of ones. Uh, so they're going to be a little less good. Um, now we have to see what type of craft worlds, you know, if you get a hit reroll, a wound reroll or one or the other. Um, I think Uthway is getting one, but we'll have to see exactly what those are because before with Master Crafted um, and like cover or no, not getting any cover against the guns, these things were super, super lethal because you're rerolling a hit, rerolling a wound. Um, the D cannon, I, I used to take six D cannons and three Shadow Weavers. So when we look at that, the D cannons just get a huge, huge native buff. They. They're, they're still 24 inches. They're still out of line of sight. They're still minus four AP. They used to just be D6 damage. So like they were already an absolute train wreck. And I would say just kind of an overlooked gun because they're a little pricey. Um, but they're very, very annoying to play against because they just delete your enemies. Uh, so now they're D6 plus two damage. So you're at least getting three damage and you can be doing up to eight. Like what? It's insane. That's so good. Uh, so like that's killing things like Terminators and stuff like that. Every time they fail a save, which is really, really good. You're not going to have to waste two shots to kill to kill things like that. Then in addition, sixes to wound are an additional mortal. So now against like Custodes and Terminators, like you do these shots, you know you're killing one. You're going to do a little bit splash damage possibly with sixes. Um, they don't have a lot of shots. So like chances you get those mortals are a little slim. Um, you know, D3 shots, it's a hit or a miss, but it's a nice little bonus. Uh, the, the minimum three damage is, is really insane. Um, and then you have the Shadow Weaver profile. So this is still in direct fire. It's still D6 shots. Um, it's just getting AP. So it used to get minus four AP on sixes. Now it's just flat minus two AP. Uh, this is probably just better. Um, now we're going to have to hope that we have something to ignore cover. Otherwise, it's not going to be as good, but it's better than zero AP. So really good for picking off those units that just sit on objectives and everything like that. The Vibro Cannon. So the Vibro Cannon has some pretty cool changes. So what it used to do is every Vibro Cannon you used to shoot at the same target, you would gain AP and you'd gain a plus to wound typically. Um, so you'd start at zero AP and you'd be like, oh, I got to shoot all these Vibro Cannons so that I'm AP4 and I'm wounding better. So um, now... They are just minus one AP all the time. So your AP is not going to get that strong, which is kind of unfortunate, um, which makes me think that I don't know how viable these are really going to be. And then they're flat two damage, which is really good. But I mean, most things minus one AP, you're not, you're not pushing their save enough. Uh, so then what's cool is, is if you target the same unit with two or more, they're going to auto hit. So that's really cool. So now you've got these super long range flamers that are minus one AP flat two damage. And then three or more of them, you get plus one to wound. 
So now you start just kind of going down and saying, okay, uh, let's shoot at like this monster or this vehicle and let's auto hit them and let's wound them on, you know, threes. And it's like, okay, it might start to get pretty good just because you're getting a lot of damage through there. Um, but I don't see myself taking three, six, nine of these vibro, vibro cannons to like really make it worth it. Um, so yeah, I think D cannons, amazing. We're going to see that on Wraith Seers. Um, it's going to be really cool to see, uh, what other wraiths, you know, get and everything like that. So, uh, super excited for my D cannon list to come back. Then the one you've all been waiting for the night spinner. So I will say personally, I always had a super big grudge against night spinners. I understand why they were good, why they got played a lot. I personally never put them in my list. And the reason for that is, uh, just at, at no AP, I'm just like, they don't do enough. Um, no AP ignoring cover. It's like, cool. Maybe you'll make some saves. Maybe you won't. So then they just become this backfield thing that you're using for your two to the last and yada, yada, yada. So now they're just going to be flat to AP, which is insane. So they're two, still two D six shots. They're minus two AP and they're flat to damage. Uh, these things become a, an absolute menace. And I will not be surprised if you don't see three of these in most lists. Um, especially on like player place terrain formats, you could hide these things all the way in your back objective. You could block your whole deployment zone. They never have to do anything. They don't have battle focus. It doesn't matter. They're just not going to get any rerolls, but it doesn't matter either because they're just going to plink shots downfield and pick things up. Um, so then we did get to see a sneak peek into what the vehicle upgrades and equipment look like now in ninth edition. So you got the crystal targeting matrix, which is now going to ignore all modifiers to hit. So if somebody is minus one to hit, or you have a forest or anything like that, you can just ignore it. Um, I guess that's cool. If you really care about it. Um, I'm not sure that I'm gonna, I would spend for that upgrade. You probably want these things relatively cheap. Um, so spirit stones, used to be you know you get a six of funeral pain which i think was super valuable on most of the eldar vehicles now it's just going to count as double wounds remaining uh personally don't really care about this at all anymore i think that typically if eldar tanks are going down into those lower wound thresholds they're dying most of the time so i think it's going to be very few times that that's actually going to matter i i'm never going to upgrade with that now Star Engines is interesting. It's a three inches to your, to your move. I don't think for the Night Spinners in particular, that's good, but I could see like on a Wave Serpent um, how the or a Falcon even, how those could be really, really good. Um, you know, moving like a base 15 inches is pretty strong. Uh, an extra three inches on transports, that's pretty good. So I can see Star Engines on most transports for sure. And then here's a, then, then this is even cooler where vector engines allows you once per battle to gain battle focus. So now if you have like a transport or something like that, or you do need line of sight, let's say like fire prisms, um, anything like that, you can just touch the terrain, move off for, you know, once, once a game and be back in your safety. And then if, you know, you need to like do something with transports and you still need to shoot them or something like that. And they don't have battle focus. It's like, okay, you can move them. They're 15 inches. You can shoot and now you can battle focus to move further up or further onto an objective or behind cover. So you can position yourself to where you just have to move one inch and then not be seen. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, huge fan. So yeah, that does it for the platforms and the night spinners. Obviously, let us know in the comments what you think about these and what you're excited for. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and do all those fun things. And we'll see you on the next one.